Narina Hertz, The Lonely Century, How Isolation Imperils Our Future. Dive into The Lonely Century, How Isolation Imperils Our Future, by Narina Hertz and explore how neoliberal capitalism has contributed to a widespread sense of loneliness, affecting various age groups across the globe. From the Tachijai prison in Japan to Europe, the United States, and Australia, the rate of loneliness has risen alarmingly. This summary provides valuable insights about how this phenomenon is not just about personal relationships, but also extends to how we feel about our employers, communities, and governments. Learn how the ripple effects of neoliberalism have changed our values, fueled loneliness-induced diseases, affected politics, and reshaped our urban and digital experiences. The Ravages of Neoliberalism The rise of loneliness in our society has a cause, neoliberal capitalism. If you think loneliness is a generational problem, think again. The lonely century, where people of all ages suffer from extreme loneliness, has reached unprecedented levels. What is driving this tragic epidemic? Adherents of neoliberal capitalism such as Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan, in the 1980s promoted the values of self-reliance and market competition over communal values and the collective good. For decades later, the grip of neoliberalism has seen wealth gaps increase significantly. In America, executives now make close to five times more than the average worker, while poverty, loneliness and isolation continue to take root. The corrosive effects of hypercompetitiveness on our mindset permeate our culture such that we are increasingly less inclined to reach out and help each other, as seen in the decline of solidarity and kindness. Furthermore, the pursuit of self-interest, at the expense of the collective good, reflects in the lyrics of contemporary pop songs. All in all, loneliness has become a pernicious feature of our times mainly because of neoliberal capitalism. The Connection Between Community and Longevity the Herdim, a Judaic community in Israel, have a longer life expectancy than their poverty and obesity rates suggest due to their tight-knit community. Conversely, loneliness causes illness and disease, triggering stress responses and persistent inflammation in the body, making it more susceptible to illnesses such as heart disease, stroke, and dementia. This is why the current loneliness crisis is taking a physical toll and costing the global economy billions of dollars. Building and maintaining strong communities is essential for overall health and well-being. Loneliness and Right-Wing Populism A Center for the Study of Elections and Democracy poll shows that Trump supporters are less likely to have close friends or acquaintances than those who voted for Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. This loneliness could be the key to understanding right-wing movements and their link with totalitarianism. Working-class men struggling with a loss of economic security and social status are vulnerable to right-wing populist leaders who promise a return to the traditional employment and community spirit of days gone by, as evidenced by Trump's Make America Great Again campaign. However, this community is based on exclusion, as Trump's xenophobic rhetoric shows. Urbanization and Loneliness Loneliness is a growing problem in urban centers with almost 70% of the global population expected to move into cities by 2050. Mukbang, Rent-A-Friend, and other services alleviate loneliness but are transactional and require little emotional input. Real friendships are essential for building the social muscle that underlines democratic practices. The Price of Going Contactless the loss of human interactions in a world of contactless commerce increases loneliness, which is detrimental to our well-being. As we gradually move towards a society focused on contactless commerce, it's crucial to consider the cost of this trend. Amazon Go is an example of a store that lets customers buy items without interacting with cashiers. The downside is that it's yet another way to avoid human interaction, which can lead to loneliness. The United States and the United Kingdom have been reducing funding for communal spaces, including libraries, playgrounds, and youth centers, which have been essential to learning how to interact with people who are different from us. The pandemic has caused many of us to avoid human contact completely, exacerbating this problem. Microinteractions, such as friendly chats with baristas, are essential to our well-being. 
According to a 2013 study by sociologists at the University of British Columbia, friendly group participants experienced increased connection and happiness. These casual conversations color our daily lives and make us feel more connected. We must be mindful of the long-term effects of COVID-19 social distancing requirements. Otherwise, we might risk losing the benefits of human interaction that we've come to rely on. Digital addiction in children. Smartphones and social media have transformed the way we communicate, but they have also made us addicted to technology. On average, people check their phones 221 times a day, and teenagers spend most of their time online. The addictive quality of social media is no accident but rather a deliberate strategy by the designers behind it. Unfortunately, excessive screen time has a negative impact on our face-to-face -face social skills. For children, it can stunt their emotional expression and empathy. Additionally, social media exposes children to cyberbullying, which is a growing concern. Regulation is necessary to make online spaces safer for children. Allowing addictive social media for children under the age of consent should be banned, much like how car seatbelts were made mandatory for kids. Social Robots, The Cure for Loneliness A recent study has revealed that social robots could be a potential solution for loneliness. In Japan, care workers are in short supply, and elders are experiencing higher rates of loneliness. To combat this, an experiment was run in Seijo, where 10 elderly residents were paired with an AI robot called Papiro. The participants quickly grew fond of their companion. A survey conducted in 2018 found that 80% of Japanese seniors are willing to use social robots as their companions. In San Marcos, California, Abyss Creations have been producing real dolls, sex robots that have become companions for their clients. The company has shifted its focus to Harmony, an AI integrated head that can be attached to a real doll's body. Such robots have the power to combat loneliness, but the question arises whether investing time and energy in real friendships may become less important as robot technology advances. Towards a kind and community driven society. The COVID 19 pandemic has exposed our society's deep divisions along race, gender, and wealth. The author argues that we can learn from the New Deal enacted by President Franklin D. Roosevelt in the 1930s and come together to create something new. The key message is that this will require both structural and personal changes, including a commitment to social security and health care, and giving all people a real voice in democracy. The Taiwanese government's example of including citizens in decision-making offers a path towards building a more caring and tolerant society that prioritizes collective well-being over individualism. Each person can contribute by making small efforts towards reconnecting with their communities. In conclusion, The Lonely Century highlights the pressing need to address the loneliness epidemic fueled by neoliberal capitalism. As various aspects of our lives, health, economy, politics, urbanization, and digital lifestyles are negatively impacted, it is crucial to focus on collective action and structural changes. By committing resources to social security, welfare, healthcare, and fostering more inclusive communities, we can combat loneliness and create a caring society. Examples from Taiwan and other initiatives offer hopeful possibilities for reconnecting with others, as we work together to undo the damage of the lonely century, both on a personal and societal level.